It's a house thing, yeah. man. We've not spoken a couple of days. I've, I know, I've, yeah. I've tried to not talk to you, so we've got some stuff to talk about on the podcast, <laughs> to be fair. I've been so busy, man. Like, like again, people don't do not realise how busy I am. It's, it's stupid. So today, I had this headphone in this ear talking to Kirsty while she was filming down in Stoke on Trend. Then I had this set of headphones with one of them in this ear so I could hear what I was editing at the same time as doing the work with her. So I've got her voice coming in both ears, but one's yeah. like one's from two years ago. Uh, and Matt Fong was on it, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and, and then I was also oh, just doing okay. other work as well. And yeah, it's just madness, man. Like trying to do as much as possible but I've been screwed over by Facebook today which is not good um, we uploaded a video okay. yesterday well several videos yesterday and sort of scheduled them all and um, yeah. I woke up this morning to like a different monetization symbol normally it's green and it's like woohoo um, and, <laughs> and it was not green and it was not woohoo um, and it basically said that they needed to be reviewed but the thing is I don't know how long that takes who's doing it do I have to instigate it blah 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 so I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure that out. And our money is just going... Dun, 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 dun. Well, it's still making money, but about a yeah. fifth of what it made the day before and the day before and the day before. Wow. So it's like, um, it's proper right. messing us up because uh, we were doing so well on it, man. Like I woke up this morning, yeah. it was 18, 18 and a half thousand dollars um, had been made. Right. Um, estimated revenue. Um, and that's in the past 28 days but actually it's probably only the past 16 days or something right um, so yeah it was like it's doing so well and I don't want it to lose momentum um, bear in mind people that's not my money by the way <laughs> just so you know I'm not I'm not like making balling. I'm not balling <laughs> I'm making that for the company that I do it for and then they'll pay me out of that although I'm on a percentage so that's good Um not telling you what kind of percentage though um <laughs> and uh, yeah so that's kind of messed me up today man um but yeah i've just had a busy few days we've had a skype meeting with the director and a writer who i'm doing a feature with um we were doing sort of like putting together the treatment so that we sent it off to our american investors and then i've got a meeting with them tomorrow hopefully they're going to fund it roughly about a quarter of a million um, which sounds a lot, but it's not. <laughs> it's going to be like the in cheapest. movie terms, it's not. Oh god, it's Dropping not. The ocean. It's, it's like <laughs> we'll be we'll be lucky to get eighteen days, so three day, okay. three weeks of six days on quarter of a million, um, wow. and that's like no one's going to be getting paid, paid properly. I mean, yeah. everyone's going to be doing yeah, yeah, it on yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Mate rates basically because I am going to be calling in tons of favors, but fingers yeah. crossed we can get this off the ground and it'll be the first first one to hit the ground running because the, the money's pretty much there. Um, it's just yeah. whether they, they go for it. So hopefully, this Skype tomorrow will, 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 will decide that. Um, so yeah, just work your work, work as always. Cool, cool. I've been up to um, well, what have I been doing the last? I've been a cowboy essentially the last 48 hours. Red Dead. Yes. <laughs> Red, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, just been smashing that. And then uh, this morning, we were out the back, just sitting in the garden, when we heard a big explosion, and oh. up the back fence, and a car I saw exploded this video. out the back of us. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So tell us more about that then, Nick. I'll, we'll, I'll slot the bit of the video into this. Okay, yeah, we were it. just sat there, and then a load of smoke started billowing, and then we heard like a boom. And sort of looked over the back garden, and yeah, this car was on fire while a bloke was just stood there like that, going, oh. This is what happens, ladies and gents, when you don't check your motor, <laughs> see if it's got any oil in it, or anything like that. When was the last time you checked our car? <laughs> All the time. Liar. As if COVID-19 wasn't bad enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your car it? blows up. Well, did you get to speak to him, or did you speak to the guy? No, 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 no. All oh, right, the, I remember the, the RAC guy was there when it oh, right. set fire. So, so it's um, their fault. 
well, I don't know what happened. All you sort of just heard him go, "Get back, get back." <laughs> I remember. So you know Maxi Bianco, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so Maxi, he's a filmmaker, um, but he's also he's a good friend of mine, and he's he's also um, got a. a a, a shop, uh, sorry, a, like a, a deli, and he was doing a delivery with his old van, and I was just driving along Marina Marina Way, and I could see like smoke billowing out of something, and as I turned the corner, it's Maxie's van, <laughs> and, and being the filmmaker, <laughs> being the filmmaker that he is, he's not like running away, he's like running towards it with his camera. Trying to get the best <laughs> shot he possibly could <laughs> while his van's exploding. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, it's the only, only other time I've seen a car on fire, apart from what you okay. said showed today. I'm, 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 I remember when we were, uh, I was driving down with um, a couple of comedians years and years ago. We were going down to Brighton, I think, for a gig. And we were just coming on, we were on the A19 and we were just passing Middlesbrough. It was when we had like loads of snow in that about mm. maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah. It was just, um, as we were driving, this car overtook us and then went up onto two wheels and then flipped oh. in front of us. Oh. And me and little Ka- me and little Carl Gillespie just went, oh, there's somebody's days ruined. Wow. <laughs> this car just flipped straight over. Yeah, that was insane. That's crazy, uh, man. That's absolutely crazy. But the uh, the big news this week, mate. It's What's off. That? It's off. Khabib, Tony. It's off. Oh. It, what do you think of that, do, man? They're all, he's still trying to do. They're all do saying the that fight. Khabib bottled it in it by going to Russia. No, no, no. no. He was saying. told. He was told to go to Russia. He was told. Was it's he? Not, yeah. So he's came out on his Instagram and he said, um, in March nineteenth, I think it was. He was told that 99% it wasn't going to happen in the US. So, okay. get out of the US now. That's what he's saying. So, how, where else was it going to happen then? Because obviously Tony wasn't going to be flying into Russia. <laughs> Dubai or Abu Dhabi. Somewhere yeah. like, are they the same place or not? I never know. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, I never know with them actually. I know, it's, Dubai, like, it's just the right? Emirates. I don't know. I'm not like I literally have no idea. Is Dubai just a city or is it a? Pl- I think country Abu Dhabi is the country. I think Dubai Abu Dhabi is the city. country and Dubai is the like the, the major populace. But yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's fifth time unlucky. They're never gonna. Yeah, I don't that. think we're ever gonna see this fight, are we? No, it's doomed. No. Like literally, Unless, the next time they make it. There'll be something even worse. There'll be an asteroid coming. Well, um, th- th- there is one coming. Have you not seen? What no, it's NASA gone. It's gone. Saying? No, it's gone past. Oh, is it gone now? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It was like <laughs> two hundred million miles away. Uh, yeah, t- but that's pretty close in space terms. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. It was two hundred million. Was it two hundred million or was it two million? Two million miles away. Yeah, I, don't yeah. Think, I think two hundred million is way further. Well, it is way further, obviously. Right. But. It's still pretty close, though, in space terms. Absolutely. Like, the sun is close in space terms. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 to be fair. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, so, the, the world's not going to end, but it could. That could come back around and hit us one time in the distant future, they say. Um, yeah. Not in our lifetime, obviously. We won't be here, mate, so don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> no, although, unless they figure out this living forever shit, shit you know what I mean? It's... Would you would you do that though? If you could live forever, would you live forever? Well, it depends. Are you going to be immortal or immortal? Because if you're immortal, you be... that means you can't die. If you're immortal, yeah. it just means if you get hit by a bus, you're dead, right? Oh, if you're going to be if you're going to be immortal, though, you've got to do it exactly the same as the fucking Highlander, innit? it? You can only die by getting your head cut off. <laughs> there can only be be one. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. So if you're immortal, oh, he's gone again. Um, oh, he's back. I don't know what it is, mate. It's just for some reason my laptop just goes, "Oh, you've touched me." Huh? <laughs> <laughs> At least it's still connected. Off. It seems like it's just the screen or something that's a problem. Then just don't touch it. It's like our last one. I touch her. It's like get it, get it off, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect from like an eight-month pregnant lady? You know what I mean? Yeah, true, true, yeah. true, true, true. Until the, the night tomorrow. before. Until the night before. Yeah, got... She'll be like... Another scan tomorrow. Oh, really? 
Mm. Uh, but it's at the uh, What does this so, scan do? Because you know it's a girl. No, so basically, because we're classed as a high risk pregnancy because of our ages and oh, um, right, stuff okay. like that, um, it's just like it, we get bonus scans. So, right. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, I can't go now, so I'm I'm, I'm not oh, allowed course, to play yeah. any to play any more part now in the. So uh, you're just going to be playing Red Dead of, instead, then. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to shoot cowboys. <laughs> Oh man! And chase bounties, and mm. fish, and hunt. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a good life, man. Sounds like a good life. Red Dead's a good game, man. Red Dead is mm. a really good game. Yeah, uh, is it the second one that you're playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this massive map, just yeah. graphics are unbelievable. The I, story's like eight hours actu- long. I actually got in touch with them. Um, what Rockstar? Rockstar Games, because obviously the film that we're They've got an office in Hartlepool, haven't they? Have they? Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, there you go. All right, okay. I got to touch them. They're in Edinburgh, I think. Um, okay, yeah. They've, anyway, they've so definitely I, got an office in Hartlepool. That's so weird. I'll have to try and find that. So um, <laughs> so because we're making uh, a film called The Moonshine Gang of Cheyenne, it's a western, and it's got werewolves in it, and it's actually got Stephen yep. Ogg starring in it. Uh, now, Stephen Ogg, for those that don't know, um, was in another Rockstar Games um, film. Uh, sorry, game. Um, which was GTA Five, and he played Trevor Phillips. Um, mm-hmm. so the best my, character. So, so what we, what I thought was, let's get in touch with them, and um, see if we can get them to do. Is it called a DLC? DLC. A DLC is where they create sort of a second game, and it can be like zombies or vampires. And oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, how about they create a DLC of the Moonshine Gang of Cheyenne? And what's going to happen is, obviously, this this was my idea. So, um, Stephen Ogg in our film is called uh, Jack McGovern. That's his character. And he gets bitten and he's a, he becomes a werewolf. And we've got sequels planned and all this kind of stuff with him. And one of the sequels is actually set, well, it's set up in the Nat, in uh, Nazi Germany. Um, so, he's okay. going to be like a werewolf killing Nazis and stuff. Um, and one of the things that, I thought was, what if he was a great, great, great granddad of Trevor Phillips? But actually, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But actually, he's not. Trevor Phillips is Jack McGovern. He's just, he's a werewolf because he's crazy, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happens is Jack McGovern in the sixties takes loads of drugs. <laughs> And goes totally crazy <laughs> and becomes Trevor Phillips. <laughs> so that was my idea. Well, there's, there's little links to Red Dead and GTA all the way through, like because all of these places yeah. that you go into on mm. uh, Red Dead, mm. by the sounds of it, but well, by the looks of it, when you look at GTA, all become parts of um, the GTA oh, game. But really? you've got this yeah. guy that just wanders around, calling yeah. out for his mate all yeah. the time. But they're they're apparently supposed to be time travelers right. from. GTA 5. That's cool. It's really clever the way go, that they do things. It really is. Yeah, it's a whole I'm just world, not a gamer. Man. I'm just not uh, a gamer. I can't I, get into it. I was never really one for sort of gaming. I didn't buy a... Like, literally, the only reason I bought a PlayStation was because of Red Dead 2, and I bought mm. the game before, it, before I even bought the PlayStation. <laughs> I, to, I, borrow, the I borrowed, my nephew's play, borrowed my nephew's PlayStation so I could play it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I might uh, one day try and play it, but it's just not for me. Um, I tell you what, we were going to do with it actually. Red Dead Two is um, you can have a cinema mode, and okay. so Jim had had the idea. He got it from another director. To you've got to do storyboards when you make films, yeah. So it gives mm-hmm. everybody a sense of what you do. Well, if you play a cinema mode, and each person has like a character. You can effectively set up the shots and you can even choose your lenses and all that kind of stuff so you can make it look exactly like you want. Um, nice. And so we thought about doing that because there was another director called... Um, oh, what's his name? He made a film called Kill List. Uh, uh, ben Wheatley. Um, right. And he made a film not long ago called uh, Free Fire and it's basically all set in a um, warehouse. It's like a... <laughs> it's a shootout for like the full film oh, okay. and so what he did is he went on to Minecraft and he built the warehouse oh. in Minecraft 
<laughs> and put everything what? where he wanted to do it, yeah, and he just sort of plotted it all out in Minecraft. Have you seen right. what Minecraft have done with that library that they've got? I don't know. So basically countries like China and stuff like that, they don't they don't have access to what's actually going on in the world and that. And there's yeah. this big, massive, great big library that they've built in um, mm. Minecraft where people from China and stuff can go in and read newspaper cut-ins. And, yeah, yeah, it's very, very clever. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. There was a person on, um, on Joe Rogan a few weeks ago, who a lady who works for... For the life of me, I can't remember what it is now. Um, she, they translate books into Arabic. Um, oh, okay. And so, because um, obviously in Middle Eastern countries, they've never read any Westernized literature. So it could be yeah. Winnie the Pooh, it could be anything, you know. Um, so what they do is they translate them and um, and dish them out to people. Probably trying to indoctrinate, <laughs> right. indoctrinate them. Right, so we uh, should we should we tell people who else? I've we've just, got on I've today? just, I've just, I've, I've just sent him a message. So, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls that are watching this podcast, tonight's guest that we've got on is a comedy <laughs> legend. Um, he's half Iranian, half from the borough. He goes by the name of Patrick Monahan. And he's half a very Irish. funny dude. Oh yeah, he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's dad's he's like Irish. A, yeah, his dad's Irish, his mum's Iranian, he's from Teesside. Yeah, he's screwed in every way. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> so, yeah. Um, Pat will be joining us in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, um, I've sent him the link, so he'll he'll jump in. But um, yeah, I've got some nice footage of Pat that I was looking at today, actually, from the comedy world. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh, okay. you know um, Leon Brown? Uh, yes, I know Leon, yeah. Yeah, so Leon, he says hello, by the way. Um, Hello, he's, he's he's like a budding video editor. Here he is. Here he is. Hey, <laughs> Patrice, Check him out. Need to put your audio on, dude. It's oh, coming. It's there he bad. is, man. Here he is. Yes. What's Hello, up, mate? mate? How's it going? How are you guys? Yeah. Where are you now, then? So you're in you're in Bournemouth, and you had him in Hartlepool. I'm in Hartlepool, mate. I'm in Plymouth, mate. Plymouth. Plymouth. It's near Bournemouth, isn't it? And where are you, London? Yeah. Yeah, in London. Oh, you traitor. I'm in London in the death centre of the coronavirus, like a nut. <laughs> I'm going to head for the hills and I'm like, listen, I'm staying here, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's got his hazmat suit on. <laughs> yeah. Super corona. You're looking very <laughs> well, Pat. No. Yeah, you're looking well, mate. He is. Really? I think he's been yeah. he's definitely been getting some kind of have you getting some fillers there and uh No, no. there it is. <laughs> I just fucking wish it's the sunshine. It's the it sunshine. Caught a bit of sun. Not you. It's his creaming regime that he does. From eight o'clock in the morning he's just rubbing that yeah. cream onto them <laughs> onto them cheeks. <laughs> you know on there, mate. <laughs> he's like Benjamin Button. Yeah, Bloody hell. Eight. And how's the hair, guys? Uh, mine's getting something? bigger. Yeah. Nick. Are you, yeah. Nick, are you shaving yours, Nick? No, I'm just naturally bold, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to, you still well, shave it down. Yeah, you got I have to, I have to shave, shave the top and sides. Otherwise, it just makes me look about... It look, makes me start looking like Sven Goran Eriksson. <laughs> My dad shaved his head today. Oh, did he? Yeah. Did you help him? No, he just bicked his head. I, I'm going to see if did I can... Did he shave the tash off as well? I'm going to see if I can show it. No, the tash is still there. Are you cutting your own hair, Adam? Are you managing to do that? There's ah, no hairdressers. No, there's no hairdressers. Mine's just getting longer, Pat. It's just getting longer <laughs> and longer and longer. Our last yeah. likes it long, He's so... He's going to get an emo fit in a bit where it just goes flub from all the way on the top of his Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah. If you walk, open the, the chat thing... Here, yeah? Yeah. WhatsApp image. Yeah, click on that. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. Oh, wow. Bloody <laughs> hell. <laughs> God, look at that. He's still got the moustache. He's still got the tash. He's still got the massive yeah. eyebrows. And he shaved his head. Yeah, Let... I'll do it. I can reflect it for you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to... Um... There, can you see it now, Nick? <laughs> No, but I can see your nose, mate. I can see right up your nose. Wait, can you see it on my phone? Wow, okay, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the cremo. But yeah, my hair, I was due a haircut before we went into lockdown. 
and it's starting yeah. to get a bit long now. But no. I think I'm just going to ride it out. Yeah, your hair's that... alright. You can keep it like that for another couple of months, easy. I've just got that Elvis thing going on. Yeah. You're looking what's, good, what's though. What's happening with your hair anyway, Pat? It's what? What's happening with your hair? Your hair's looking rather curly. I need to get it. I know, because I, I forgot. I, I should have had a haircut before lockdown, mm -hmm. but I didn't realise it was going to happen that quick. But then I did trim a little bit, but I need to still trim some more of it. Your last not cutting it for you. No. Well, she said she, she wants to. She said she would do it, help me. But yeah, I women might, always might... like to have scissors in their hands near a man's neck. That's just, mm. that's that's where they like to be. <laughs> really dangerous. <laughs> so, how's that... life, Pat? Yeah, yeah how's life, Pat? It's too. been a while. Yeah. God, when did I last just... see you guys? Was it with the wall? The, um, the, do you remember Hadrian's wall? Yeah, I've been looking at that footage today, yeah. actually. Yeah. Because it would have been hardly pulled the flicks. When was the last time we did flicks? 20... Oh, tw well, 2016 we closed. So it'll have been 2015. 2015. Yeah, 2015. 2015. So it's been five years, man. Jeez. And then when was the um, when was the Hadrian's Wall War? Was that after that? 2013. Oh jeez, yeah. Ooh, so I've shit. actually been going over that footage because um, when Ian Cognito died last year, I got the footage out because he did a set at Heading on the Wall, didn't he? And um, yeah. So I posted that out uh, oh. just so people could see it, and then I, I've been. Do the walk? Did he do the walk then? No, he just no, came no. He turned up on a bus the day before we finished. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, oh, so funny. I bet he smashed the game. Was he oh, he did. He was absolutely fantastic. I'll I'll send you a link to the to the video. But um, so I was looking over some more footage uh, the other day because what I'm thinking about doing um, is I've got seven gigs, seven full gigs worth of comedy. And my idea is I'm going to have a chat with all you guys, comedians, and say, right, okay, would you mind if we put this up online? And if we make any money on it, we'll split all of the money with everybody. Um, yeah. Maybe even give some to the charity as well, um, yeah, yeah. depending on whether it makes any cash. Because I'm just thinking there's a lot of people sat at home, bored, out of their mind now, looking for new stuff. And yeah. this is all fairly old material as well. Yeah. You know, it's seven-year-old. It will yeah. be for Pat. Pat won't even remember what, what the fuck he said seven years ago. Pat doesn't have material. Pat just has hugs and yeah, smiles and loveliness. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Yeah, definitely put it up. I'll, I'll, I'll see it as well. Yeah, it's, uh, so I've got somebody who's going to edit all of that. Um, I was just telling Nick before he came on. Uh, Leon Brown, he's going to start editing it tomorrow. Um, and yeah. we're just going to break it down into the full, the full thing. Then we'll do it by each person's set and then we'll also break it down by little bits for each person's set um, and yeah. then we'll give that to them and they can do whatever they want with it so it's right better than me sitting on it yeah and stick Very out nice. some on social media as well plug it yeah. stick like one minute two minute clips get it all out there YouTube yeah because have you got a YouTube channel as well haven't you <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I'm, I've got a monetized YouTube channel myself, and I've run a massive YouTube channel as well, which has got like 1.7 million subscribers on it. Whoa! Um, what, what, that one, then? It's for a company uh, that's based in the northeast, and I've been running that for the past four years, um, as well as like doing film work, and yeah, yeah. Um, it's sort of what, what, it's the company. The company Nail, they're called Nail Nail Nails. It's basically nail art, but it's opened my eyes to how social media and YouTube like, yeah. can make people. Wow. We've been doing brilliant stuff on Facebook recently, just in the past few weeks, and making an absolute killing on it. So hopefully I'll be able to bring some of that audience over to the comedy stuff, and, and we'll make a bit of cash for everybody, because, I mean, shit, everyone's skint now. Yeah, how do you do that then with Facebook? So people just pay like a PayPal or sort of like no, pay to no, it's just um the 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 channel that I runs monetized the page, it's already monetized. So as soon as we put a video up, it starts making money. Oh bloody hell! Yeah, cool. um, and I think a lot of comedians now are starting to kind of go, oh shit, I should have been doing this a while ago, um, because now everyone's well effectively jobless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, man. It's going to be like this then, a couple of months. What, when do you reckon the clubs, pubs, everywhere will open up again? I think it's, it's going to take a long while. I, really I, I reckon we're not going to be we're not going to be back to normal till 
I would say October, November. October, November time. Yeah. Um, I think people um, are going to be scared to go out. Yeah. You know? And the people won't have money, will they? No one's going to have cash to buy anyway. Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's well, this, uh, this must be killing you, Pat, because you normally do about 50 gigs a night. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's actually quite tranquil. It's like... It's so funny. I was chatting with my, my, my partner, my missus. I was saying about... It, it's almost like... You know, like when people... When it first happened, everyone was like saying, oh, my God, like, there's no way the planet or whatever, everyone would stop. And it's almost like the planet's reset itself. And it's the same for us, I think, for for everyone. I think people mm -hmm. doing jobs, comedy, whatever, it's just like, great. you never thought, this is like what retirement would be like. You think, God, that's it now. I can just, don't have to drive anymore, traveling around. Yeah. And, now it's like, and I'm just, and I've just got to wait for the flu to kill me. Exactly yeah, like retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the next show. That'd be a one hour show with the flu killed me. It'd be like, <laughs> No, just me. <laughs> <laughs> See, they've just announced uh, Edinburgh's cancelled. Yeah, Edinburgh's cancelled there. Everyone knew anyway, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was... I mean, the, the thing is with Edinburgh, the reason why it's so hard to cancel it is because it is... It is about 16 different organisations trying yeah. to run it. So really, Edinburgh... I mean, the main ones have cancelled it, but to be honest, us three, could, we could all just turn up in August and pitch up. Which well, yeah, because it's 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 a free festival, isn't it? So, yeah. it's like, like you've got that whole. Yeah, it's the TV festival, the uh, theatre festival, yeah. the spoken word, the comedy festival, yeah. the music festival, international arts festival, uh, whatever you know, the circus, all these different festival things. And so, to be honest, I think street performers will still be there. But it depends mm -hmm. whether the government put a lockdown in. Yeah, and I think. The reason, Ed, the reason Edinburgh Festival did exactly what um, the Olympics did and the FIFA and everyone cancelled it now because they know that if they put it on and twenty only 25% of the audience turn up, they're going to suffer so much having to pay their staff. So they're just saying, you yeah. know what, Let's just put it off till next year. But for performers, street performers, you can still go up there and in august you're still gonna have some tourists yeah. what, no. what, what 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 would you want to do though on like unless you're going to be stood there in a full fucking <laughs> like <laughs> mask and gown and stuff like that you know what i mean setting yourself on fire while juggling no because what i might do is because i can't juggle at all but i might turn up speak talk as if i'm doing it and then when I go and put a mask on, just get a professional in a in my disguise and just get them to stand there and do it. And then I'll <laughs> so, so what will you what will you do with your show then, Pat? Now that obviously I'm assuming you've probably written a show already for Edinburgh. So what are you gonna yeah. do with it? Are you gonna take that up next year or are you just gonna sack yeah. this show off completely and Well, I think the problem is because every year because I I've literally since two thousand and three or two thousand and two 2003, 2004, I've done a solo show every year, a brand new hour. Mm -hmm. So this will be the first time in 17 years that I've not done a full hour. But I've already written it, like you said, I've already written it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'll, uh, I'll, this, oh, my current tour it was meant to finish in June, but that's been pushed now to September, October, November. So once that old show finishes, I'll run this new one out. And then I could, I could take it to Edinburgh next year. But the thing is, I only use Edinburgh to get shows ready to tour. So actually, yeah. it might not be. It might not. I'll probably mix it up. I'll probably do some new stuff by then. Because yeah. you don't want to then do a show that I've written, and also some of it. It's all like like this new show is all about you know moving in to a new place. Me and Mrs. We've renovated. It's all about the stuff that I've been doing now. I don't want to be talking about that in eighteen months' time or two years' time, and then touring it a year after because then. People were like, Jesus, is he still doing his answer? Why is he still doing <laughs> Where are you going, Nick? You're not going for a piss, are you? Nope. Okay, Nick's taking us somewhere. Yeah, where are you going? Yeah, but Thanks. I mean one of the one of the things about oh we've switched positions. Yeah. Nick's disappeared. Oh. oh there he oh. is. There we go. There we go. Look at him the sound. Message bastards. to my wife. Oh He's so How is she? What? Where is she? In bed, mate. Oh, bless her. Um, How's she doing? You haven't got long now, have you? Till the baby, a couple of months? Two months? Uh, yeah, like a couple of months, yeah. So, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're getting get geared up for it now. Like all the rooms done. Um, we've just got a few bits and pieces to get, and then uh, and then we're going to have a Corona baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? That kid, that your baby is going to be like Superman or Superwoman because it's gonna it's gonna be born with all the it'll be its immune system will be amazing. It'll be born through a thing. Whereas because kids are just any of the kids now, they're all like they're just carriers, but they're so immune to it. Mm. And I think if you put on them during a crisis like this, it'd be like they'd be radioactive. Yeah. <laughs> super baby, super banks. Super <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> banks in sperm. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to come out sleeping then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's going to learn. Come out with a little, little, uh, one of the little beanie cap on, going, all right. <laughs> 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 Hundred percent, hundred percent. Have I got kids? Yeah, I've got one. Um, I've got oh. a little boy called Isaac, who's eight. Oh yeah, right. And yeah. he's ridiculously loud. Um, oh. And it's been so. so you- this is my new office. It's a oh, spare okay. bedroom slash my office. I've got my whole setup here, yeah. and I'm trying to work like every day, and it's just he's. Are you not homeschooling as well? Um, my, my, my wife is, yeah. She's she's sort of taking right. care of that side of things and I'm trying to bring in the the bacon still. Because uh, yeah. luckily I can still do my job, you know. Um, yeah. I can still do I the job. Work. Yeah. Most people can, I think, except for obviously performers, women, but still we can still Yeah, I mean, t- to be honest, I mean, I work in the film industry, film and TV as well, and, like, my industry's just decimated. Everybody's, yeah. everything's being pushed. No production's yeah. happening. Um, the only production that's happening is pretty much solo stuff. Um, yeah. So, like, if people are making vlogs and and very very like two two crew members that kind of thing. Yeah. And so all of the people I know, they're just completely out of work. Luckily, I I've still got the YouTube and Facebook content we can continue to bash are out. Doing, are you doing some vlogs as well? Have you done a lot of that? Uh, to be honest, I haven't actually been doing much vlogging with regards to. Um, to myself, I, I used to. I used to do a hell of a lot of it, but I've just found myself just doing too many other things now. I've got yeah. like several feature films in development, some short films in development, some TV yeah, in development. Is. So it's just non stop. Bloody hell. What, mm. so go, what films have you got then? Are, they, are, they, are you filming them up north? Or, or? Um, pretty much, yeah. We've got a werewolf western movie called The Moonshine Gang of Cheyenne. That's going to be shooting. We're actually looking at shooting most of it at Wynyard Hall um, oh. around that area. Um, and then I've got another one called The Devil's Lair, which is pretty much all set underground. We're going to shoot it in Middlesbrough and Hartlepool. Um, oh, where about um, Do you know Base Camp? It's a place called Base Camp. Um, it's ne- near the train station, I think 10 feet tall on it. Um, and basically, they've got these basements and like cave tunnels underneath it. So we'll shoot quite a bit in there. And I'm doing a set build in Hartlepool and. Um, we just we've got a meeting tomorrow to see if we're going to get the money for it, um, and then we yeah. can start moving forward on it. So it's quite exciting, um, but at the moment everything's just pretty stalled. Um, yeah. Apart from the YouTube stuff. Yeah, good lad. Yeah, but that's it now. It's good. Just work mm. online now. And just doing more vids and stuff. So are you are you gonna ha- end up taking some of your stuff online? Are you gonna be doing performances and that kind of thing just to? Yeah, well, uh, luckily I've filmed some shows, like two of shows from before. I've got some DVDs. So I think maybe putting bits and pieces online for that. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I've been doing like some every day. I might do, if something happens, I might do like a little one minute video for social media, bits cool. and pieces. Like that. But it's, um, and also just taking advantage of the time where I can just write now and just get, you know, work on other projects, other yeah. writing. Because uh, I, I did some kids' uh, books as well, so just finishing my. Oh, books. cool! Well, oh, okay. Tell us about them. Yeah, so I've just I've, I've literally um, I've written a couple of them, but they're from shows that I used to do before. Yeah, and then uh, and I wrote them into the books, and then basically um, we're in talks with like a couple of publishing stuff, and, and what they were saying was, um, I've done some first podcasts. Mm-hmm. I don't know, do you guys have podcasts? Have you got, have you got any podcasts in that? Yeah, yeah, I listen to some podcasts, yeah. 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 So, well, with this, I never really listened to podcasts before. I didn't really know much about I'm it. a huge podcast fan. It's all I listen oh, to. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Is it good? Because people were saying to me, oh, you should 
you should listen to the podcast. The only thing is though, because it's good if you're traveling or whatever, but I'm always, if I'm driving or whatever, I never just got the rage or whatever. Yeah. But, um, so what I've done- I'm you, surprised, are you actually driving to your own gigs now then, Pat? Yeah, I've always, so, a, I've always had a license. No, 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 I know you've always had a driving license, but um, I like, so yeah, me and Pat, we've known each other since, yeah. when did we first meet? I first met you at a gig in Hartlepool, I think, oh, okay. um, yeah, in 2000, the back end of 2010. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it. it was a private function for a building company. And my yes. mate worked for that firm, and you do a gig for him every year, and I managed to jump on and do like fifteen minutes yeah. before you. Yeah. I killed the room. I killed the room completely before you went no. on. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I remember that you did a great joke about a terrorist thing. Do you remember you had your beard and everything? <laughs> but um, Nick, oh yeah, but everyone. I, I, Nick used to look like a terrorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all you got to do is go back to the first video. I've got a massive beard on the first podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you did. It wasn't that big. It wasn't as big as it used to be. No, 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 it was, it was, it was getting there. But um, because I used to drive Pat about to a couple of gigs and stuff yeah. up in the northeast and around the areas, and Pat used to get in the car and he'd be, like, I'd be like, "Are you all right?" And he'd go, "Yeah." <laughs> and then that'd be him. For, that'd be him until we got to the next venue, and then it's sort of like a little button was pressed, and he was, ah, and away he went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> you guys must have done some miles together then. Oh yeah, Wait, yeah, we've done, we've done, done a few miles. Together? We probably, we probably did Manchester together, maybe. Well, where did we do? We, uh, did, we did Car Carlisle a couple of times, Newcastle. Oh. Um, I think we did York once, yeah. Leeds. Yeah. And then we used to always get back about half past two in the morning. I dropped yeah. Pat off, and his mum had made us a curry. We'd smash yeah. the curry at half two, I'd sit around till about four o'clock in the morning and then yeah. I'd get myself home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So you, you so the podcasts, what, what what kind of podcasts are you listening to now then, Pat? Well, I, I'm, I haven't really got into them just yet. I need to, because I've been asked to pick for any advice or anything about what you, what you listen to and stuff. But this, so I've done um, these, the books, we're releasing them as chapters and they're going to put them out as a podcast, but like a kid's story. To yeah. It's a fun as well, so it's like the parents can have a laugh listening to it as well, mm -hmm. and kids, but just the children. But yeah, I'm, um, well, everyone's been saying about podcasts, but I just don't really, really, I've heard one or two on the radio, which were really good. Like there was an interview with Jerry Seinfeld mm -hmm. and what's he called? The guy, uh, Baldwin. Uh, is it Alec Baldwin? Alec, Alec Baldwin. Stephen. There's a few of them, isn't William. there? And he was he, he interviewed Jerry Seinfeld. And he does his own podcast. Mm. Brilliant. Everyone uh, like what? everyone's got a podcast. Even me and Nick have a podcast now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, we have a podcast. But, now. I mean, what got me into podcasts was Joe Rogan. Um, Joe Rogan right. was definitely the the catalyst for me. So I wanted yeah. to get into podcasting and talk to people because yeah. since I've been listening to him for years now, I stopped listening to the music. In fact. Um, really? down to him and just listening to people talk and the conversations the, the interesting people he has on yeah what does he actually do then? so he, he just it's like a one on one is it and he just, yeah so what, he's got an actual what, studio what's his background then what is it because he's well, Joe Rogan he's a comedian comedian yeah he's a comedian but he's also um, the UFC he's like the main announcer for the UFC right um, yeah. he's also He's, uh, he was the Fear Factor guy. That's where he got his fame. He was yeah, back in the day. Yeah, the Fear Factor. It was a t it was a US TV show, and that's where he sort of made all his money. And it uh, it was like where people would have to eat donkey bollocks and things like that. It's a little bit like I'm a celebrity, just a bit harsher. <laughs> and he presented it, didn't he? And he was just like, yeah. <laughs> um, and so he he's been doing a podcast for about ten years, I think, isn't it? Something like that. Like, how long yeah, like like that. Like, just like an hour long he brings people no he, he does like three yeah, hours he's had of people podcasts that have been four or five hours at times yeah bloody hell yeah see I drive to Stoke on Trent quite a lot so it's like a three hour drive so I can listen to one podcast just on that drive wow. um, but yeah interesting guy and and that's sort of what got me started in it and then just listening yeah. to other people people who've been on his podcast I listen to their podcasts and yeah, yeah, it's 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 much more. I, I learn a lot. I like listening to the people talk. Yeah, who's been the most inspirational? Who do you think's like wow? Because like when I heard Jerry Seinfeld, I thought this is brilliant because he's really good comic, but I'm not 
with my style, but when I listen to them, God, yeah, what a good. Well, he's had, I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan has all different kinds of people on. I mean, he's had people like from Bernie Sanders to comedians yeah. to Robert geologists, Jr. actors, yeah. directors, just everything. Like, yeah. unbelievable Astronauts, people. Yeah. Hunters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's definitely worth checking out, I think. Elon Musk. I remember seeing that clip. Yeah, he's, he's had oh, Elon yeah, Musk Elon on, yeah. Musk, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. So mm-hmm. how was life in London then, mate? What's what, what's the yeah. lockdown like down down there? It's yeah. I mean, it, it's funny because you see it when you hear about it on the news, and they were going like London, Manchester, and Birmingham are going to be like the biggest cities with the biggest you know hassle or problem and stuff. <clears throat> but actually, it's only because there's so many people here. But actually, since the lockdown, it's been amazing. It's just like it's like a horror film <clears throat> because outside there's no one here. And normally where we live, when you, you literally go out up the door, by f- four o'clock, five o'clock, there's like traffic. And in the morning, I'm up this traffic. Whereas now, the, the, you'd be lucky if there's like three cars in an hour to pass. It's just surreal. Yeah. It's like, you know, like them zombie films where you watch where there's been the populace or something's killed all the people in London. <laughs> there's literally no one. And then it was so funny because I was watching um, on the news and it was, um, and they were saying about, you know, where the police... They might have to enforce it. And even when I was speaking with, with you, Banksy, about when you were saying about where you I think you said about the army were going to come out. And it's so funny in London, you don't have to bother. They just go, people say, yeah, we're not going to go to work. And they say, look, you could die, just stay in the house. So everyone just goes, yeah, we'll just stay in the house. We just want to be. Whereas I think up north, or where, where I'm from, or not, where, where, where we're all from, actually, three of us, you know, in places like that where people just go, do you know what? I'm not staying here, I'm going to go out to the pub, I'm going to out clubbing. And mm. I think in London, people just don't bother them. They couldn't give a monkeys. It'd be like, yeah, man. We, we just, definitely just had a get problem. Into a fight with coronavirus and then have a palmo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah, we yeah. definitely had a problem a couple of weeks ago where that first weekend when they were saying, look, everybody, please stay, stay at home. Yeah. No, they just didn't. No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I treated last week like a bit of a holiday, really. Um, it was a bit in the house. I wasn't one of those idiots that went outside, but I did treat it like a bit of a holiday. It was sort of, it was a bit surreal. Yeah. It's like, all oh, right, okay, we we're just gonna kind of, we're, well, we're gonna do this. Yeah. This week's been different. It's sort of like knuckling back down, get to work, do some, yeah, you know, just carry on, yeah, um, as as, as best you can. But yeah, yeah, because you've got, because listen, this is the thing. It you we're gonna be locked down for whatever three weeks four weeks maybe a month or two and then it's a chance to really empty out them cupboards clean everything write a, a to-do list get everything done that you can't normally do mm. and then people are going yeah it's gonna be great i can finish writing this i can do this i can go and do that i'll learn a language i'll do this do this and i say yeah it's great to do all that but start it now because people go on oh, no, i'll do it next week i'll do it yeah. next week before you know it we'll all be back at work again everyone will be like shit and you're going oh my god yeah. look Three words of like Spanish. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like six well, I'm, I'm, I'm currently trying to learn Greek, mate, but I've been trying to learn this now for about two years. How is it? What can you speak in Greek? Uh, I can, like, I can say hello, goodbye, good evening. Oh, um, I, 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 I can order a drink. Yes, so, speaking. How do they say hello? So, so yasas. Yasas. Yeah, yes, Tikanate. So Tikanate is like, how are you doing? And what is it? Does it sound more like Spanish or is it more like Arabic or Russian or it's French? It From sounds... Nick, it sounds West Country. Barakalo. Tikanate. But no, it's like yeah. a, it's 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 very much. Um, it's got that Mediterranean sort of. Th- 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 to it where you got to sort of say things with your tongue um yeah. but it's yeah. yeah like it's just a, it's a totally different alphabet it's a totally different language mm. whatsoever it, there's pictures in the alphabet you know what i mean it's like well, yeah, yeah, yeah. what if you can't draw so, very well yeah i fuck man yeah. that, that's a greek dyslexic <laughs> yeah <laughs> just do it like a stick man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, uh, read and write it as well that's probably even worse uh yeah i've got no interest in reading and writing as long as i can speak it you know what i mean but yeah. um what'll yeah, happen is i think 
I, th I think once 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 baby's here and um, yeah. my missus is, yeah. is speaking to her in Greek all the time, then I, that'll yeah. be a way that I learn as as as, uh, yeah. as the baby learns. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I regret. I, I wish my dad had taught me another language. Yeah, because what language do you speak, Adam? So my, I just speak Hartley Pudley, and that's about it. Because um, <laughs> you're. Please. He's Algerian, so he speaks fluently Arabic and French, um, but he never sort of, it was never something that he did at home, and he was always, he owned restaurants, so he was always dead busy, I very rarely saw him, um, so I think at, at that formative years where you're probably like up to the age of four, I never really picked anything up, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a, I'm a bit gutted about it. I mean, he speaks Spanish now. He speaks uh, Italian, some Greek. What, just mix it up then? He's just been because he's so used to different languages, it's quite yeah, easy yeah. To, to pick these things up. And it's, it's a regret. Yeah. I wish I could. Yeah. yeah, but you can learn now, though, can't you? Why don't you just start doing a bit? Um, same reason I don't get on me uh, cross trainer as much. I'm a lazy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do, go on the cross trainer, do half an hour of Arabic while you're on the cross trainer. Ah, that's not a bad idea. You kill two birds. I like that. That's productive. Right? Yeah. Doing he can two just things. about speak English when he's on the cross trainer. I don't know about <laughs> learning Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, man. So, Pat, when did you start doing stand-up then, mate? So I started end of 2000. Um, and then, yeah, I went, and, uh, I went down to London. I was, in, I was in Liverpool for about three or four years. I went there to college doing stuff. And then I was doing, like, bits of messing around, DJing, whatever, you know, music clubs and radio. And then, and then I thought, when I went to London, I didn't really know what, what I was going to do. I thought, oh, I'd love to do some, like, radio or something, you know, messed about or something that involved talking. And then when I got to London, it was huge. I couldn't believe how many people, like, there was, not loads, but there was pubs and clubs that all had, where you just turn up and they'd be like, I remember going to like this thing called the Purple Turtle. And I and I went in there, because I, I didn't really, I didn't know anyone in London. So I thought, oh, good, I'll never be a bit of a laugh. And then um, I walked into this place on a night time. I got like, you know, like um, we've got the Evening Gazette in London, they have the Evening Standard or whatever. And they had, mm -hmm. they had like a free supplement thing on a Monday and it would tell you what's on and stuff, what things. So I turned up to this gig and it was free to get in. There was about 20 people there, three bikers with leather jackets at the bar sat there. And when I went in, it was free to go in. And then I couldn't believe it. Out of like the 20 people, literally 18 of them were acts that were all getting up doing five minutes. So I just said to the fella, it was really like, oh, can I get up and do that? He went, yeah, yeah, if you want to come on um, and you could do five minutes, whatever like that, and I just got up and just thought, oh, this is a bit of a laugh, and I'll do this. How was your timekeeping back then? Did oh, you stick to the five? Awful. No, <laughs> he, it's so funny because the guy, the guy I can remember, I'll never forget the compass said to me, he said, look, this guy, he was like an experienced guy, been going for years and years, and he went, um, he said, listen, he said, we ask everyone to do five minutes, you know, because there's eight acts, first half, eight acts, second half. He said, obviously, um, you know, if you've never done it before, people struggle. You might, um, we try and say, don't come off under three minutes. Try and hit four minutes if you can. But uh, if, uh, but obviously, if you do five minutes, that's great. Because most people would, you know, quite new. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. And, and he said, don't, and don't panic if you want to come off early, but try and stay on for that three or four minutes. Said, yeah. And they said, um, but I'll give you a flash anyway, just in case. Anyway, so I, I went on. And I literally can remember it like as if it was yesterday. And I remember sitting there, there was like a couple sat at a table. I didn't even know him. I just sat by him like that. And I got up, went on, started talking. It was great. All right, what's happening? And I was like, I'm having a great laugh. The audience were lovely, but they weren't really laughing loads. But I, I was just happy. I thought, oh, this is great. I'm loving it. Chat, chat. And then he started waving his light. And I thought, oh, shit. I thought, oh, God, I've um, probably done four minutes now, five minutes. I've got a minute, whatever. And then, and I didn't realise he'd been flashing for minutes and minutes. But when I came on, he went, he went bloody hell, it's only about seven or eight minutes. He said, you want to I said, sorry, mate. I didn't realise. I thought, bloody hell. I thought, you were just, um, <laughs> you were gonna, just let me know when it was time up. So it was, yeah, I, I think that was, that was That's good one of the know. things about you, Pat, when we've gigged in the past, um, you've said to me, like, if I've, if, if, if I've been at the back of the room, you've gone, give us a flash at 25. Yeah. So I'll give you a flash. For those, those that don't know sort of comedy, a flash is like, 
you get a little light just telling you that you're coming up to the end of your time start wrapping up so uh give pat a flash and uh he ignored the first flash so i so i left it a couple of minutes give him a flash again ignored that flash and then uh I think he was supposed to do. I think you were supposed to do about thirty minutes, and then you came off stage about an hour and five minutes. And <laughs> I was just like, yeah. "Well, I was." And, and the first thing you said to me was, "Oh, was that all right? Half an hour? I went. I've been flashing you ages. Oh, I don't matter." <laughs> <laughs> That's because he spends the first twenty minutes hugging everybody and oh, talking yeah. to them before he starts. <laughs> How does that happen in Edinburgh? You must have to, because if you want to do a full hour in Edinburgh, you can't hug everybody because there's someone oh, no, coming no, no. straight after you. You know what? That was the thing in in Edinburgh. That's where, like, you know, I got them that world record for hugging and all that. And that was yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I would go on, and you'd have to do your stand up. So in Edinburgh, actually, it was only the uh, first few shows. I did one show. I think I can't remember. I think it was 2009 or 10. It was a show called Hug Me. I feel good. And the whole show was about why we should hold and it was jokes about different things about it and things that happened. And, um, but then I remember, um, and then after that, I did it a couple of times because people expected, oh, they love the hugging. But then after that, I, and then a few years after it, then I thought, well, I can't keep doing the hooks because you don't have enough time. So in Edinburgh, I would just go and do the material. And then afterwards, you just get random people. You're walking along and then random people would just stop and say, oh, can I get a hug? And I go, yeah, yeah, no worries. I say, oh, did you come to the show? And they went, no, no, just like the hug. <laughs> the when hug did you do there. the world record up? What year was it you did the world record pack? Because I'm pretty sure that was the year that me and Fong stayed in your flat for the month. Yeah. God, that would have been, what, 13? Yeah, 2013, yeah. Yeah. So after we'd done the comedy walk. Yeah. Yeah, it was after God. the comedy walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, me, me and another comic called Matt Fong, who we've mentioned a few times on this podcast, who, by the way, managed to get home from Australia safely yesterday. Oh, really? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's back. He's back. Um, but we, but uh, Pat very kindly um, let us stay with him for the month uh, yeah. in Edinburgh mm-hmm. that year. And uh, and regretted every minute. You've never, of seen it. Energy, you've, you've, you've never seen energy like it up from somebody on a morning. He used to get up about, what, about half past nine, ten o'clock? We'd, yeah. we'd come back into the flat and he's on. He's doing handstands against his wall while doing press ups. <laughs> like, yeah. do, do you still do yeah. them? Yeah, sometimes I try to. It, it, this lockdown, it's so funny because you realise it is. It's nice to get out the house and just do a bit of exercise. To start of the day, but it's quite hard to motivate yourself when you're in the house. But I think, look, you know what? Even if you just do. Mm. 50 or 60, just go and do 50 press-ups and now start your day or do something like that and then, then you can just build it. I did like Joe Wicks's PE lesson yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm in agony. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to my little boy, I was like, right, okay, come on, we're going to do it. So Isaac was just laughing his head off and just rolling around, just wanted to be tickled, basically. He's like a little, little puppy. Um, and I'm trying to do these, and I'm trying to do them properly to show Isaac what he's supposed to do. Well, I haven't exercised in years, as you can probably tell. I'm a big, big lad, right? Um, from this bit, it's not too bad. Underneath, it's really bad. Um, and so I, I've, I struggled. And I was dying by the end of it. Today, I got out of bed, stood up. Oh, my God, the backs of my legs. Ow! So, Hamstrings? Stretch. You should have stretched down. Stretch after the yeah, man. We did. We did do that. We did do that. But I'm just unfit. So it's yeah. the cross trainer tomorrow morning. I'm, yeah, I'm going to start building up that time on the cross trainer. When did you buy a cross trainer? I got it ages ago. <laughs> I just haven't yeah. used it. <laughs> I bought it a long time he ago. He collected the ring pulls off of his off the lager he drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it in about I think September last year, and it's been sat in the back of the like in the in the back of the front room, and yeah. now we've moved it in the kitchen. Close horse. Yeah, basically like close horse. In fact, it was just Isaac's toy. Um, he just loves to play on it. So we're, 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 I'm going to start using it properly and get myself motivated Maybe. a little bit. That cross trainer would be worth a bomb. If you put that on eBay, because that is like everyone <laughs> in the pop down, I was like, Jesus. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, really cross trainer. And I ordered a hot tub today. Oh, brilliant. So Ooh, I can go from the cross you. trainer straight to the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> How much did you pay for the hot tub? Um, all in all, about 420 quid or something like that. So, okay. yeah. Are they still delivering now during the lockdown? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing is, look, if I'm going to be stuck here for another two months, 
I need Get something, off. you know. So I mean, yeah. that's just a little bit of a luxury. So yeah. a hot tub, an icy in the bath. What and fart? <laughs> just sit in the bath and fart. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, not for me, like. But I just it'll be nice, something a bit different, you know. It's a good so, idea. Pat, in uh, when when was it? You what? Two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. You won that. What was the show called? Show, show me the funny. Two thousand eleven. We're oh, so 2011. Nick's yeah, shit yeah. with dates. Nick thought he met me yeah, in the mid 2000s. It was like <laughs> 2012. Terrible, <laughs> ter ter terrible with him. Um, so, when you won that, yeah. did it change your career or did it? It, did it you, helped a little bit, but it, it was sort of. It's one of them things where you. Yeah, it's not going to make you a better comic because only doing gigs and only writing is going to make you a better comic. It's like when people go on. If you go and win the X Factor, it'll suddenly make you a really good singer. So you've got to yeah. be able to do the thing. But it helped. I said it. What it did help was make you. Um, it sort of helped sell tickets in certain places. Like for instance, so like I remember playing Middlesbrough. You know, before I'd done that show, and you might have got like fifty people, or if you were lucky, or hundred people. Whatever. And then as soon as you did the show, then you'd suddenly get five times, six times as many people would come mm -hmm. and sell out the town hall downstairs or. And, you could, and then all around the UK, you could suddenly sell hundreds of tickets, hundreds of tickets. So it did, it did help. That's it's the power of TV. But I think now it's like the internet. If you can get a clip that goes viral on YouTube, yeah. and you're doing stand up, you can then sell, you can sell thousands of tickets off the back of that. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Yeah, it was, and it was good fun doing so that like, because it is, it it was yeah, it was good fun doing a, a show where you get to just do stand up in different places. I mean. It, it, it wasn't really as hard as they made out, oh, yeah, you're going to go to different, it's going to be like, we're going to do tough gigs for you. But they didn't realise, if you'd just gone to, like, normal comedy clubs on a Saturday night where they're hammered with stand yeah, yeah, yeah. tougher than going and playing to, like, nurses and doctors one week and then school kids the other week. It's just, you know what, it's what you do anyway. It's just a normal, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. boss, really. I'm doing stand-up. And, and, yeah. and then you did that, what was it called, Splash? <laughs> Splash the diving show, jumping up. Yeah, you, how, you how was that? Done? But it was so funny. That was that. I mean, it's funny because that is quite nerve wracking. Mm. But I, I, do you know? I thought I was bad with hikes, but actually doing that, it was all right. I went up to the ten meter board, and then they told me they said, "What you basically do is, it never look down, just always look straight ahead." And it's so true. If you're where, however high up you are, if you just stand and look out and look upwards, it's always going to be the same. So it's like if we're standing on the ground mm -hmm. looking up, it, it just looks the same as if you stood on top of a 10, 10 story building. And as long as you look out, just don't look down. But then they tell you to jump off it. Yeah. That's yeah and, then, <laughs> and it hurts it, more. <laughs> it's so quick. I have never, honestly, it's like, 10 meters, like you couldn't start with the 10 meters, you have to start on the one meter, then you go up to the three meters, and then five, and each of them feels high. But once you do each one, mm -hmm. slowly by slowly, you get used to it. But honestly, once you get but the higher you go up, Jesus, the quicker it, the quicker it, it's like unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember that in, even in Hartlepool at the oh. Mill House, they used to have yeah, like the, the little board, the middle board, and then they had the, the platform. Which yeah. didn't have a board yeah. on it, and I remember once doing that as a kid, and I what? I didn't think I was going to get back up to the surface oh. in time. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I felt like I was underwater for an hour. Oh, like shit. I felt like I went that okay. deep. It was horrendous. So, was, yeah. it, uh, <laughs> was it? Is it ten meter or five? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I, I, was I, high, I, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a. I think it's an eight meter board at Milhouse. Mm, it might it be was, ten. Yeah, it was. It was. It was high. It was very high. I think I did it as like yeah, a 13 like, year old or something. Yeah, when you're like 12, 11 and 12 and that, and you're sort of peering over the edge, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Thinking of technique, stand up there, look straight ahead. And I can remember it. And we did, I did one and a half somersault. They taught us the thing. You just, and actually, when you're jumping, the higher you go up, the easier it is to rotate. Mm. And that's the thing. You just, because obviously you've got, you've got slightly, you've got like, half a second longer or whatever but it is yeah i mean i think doing stand-up is quite good because it makes 
everything that makes everything not easier, but it puts it into perspective. Where no, yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Once you've done it, you just. Think, I mean, to be know, fair though, the, like doing stand up is probably one of the hardest things in the world to do. Like nah, to I get think... in front of people for the majority of the population to stand up in front of a room of people and try yeah. to make them laugh is probably yeah. the most terrifying thing they would ever do in their entire lives. Yeah, I don't know. People always have this fear, don't they? That mm. public speaking or something. But I think, and Banksy will tell you what well, I think when we do it, you've got to have the passion, you've got to love it, but also you've got to treat it as if you're just having a chat as well. That's the thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Where you go, look, yeah. I'm. I'm not gonna. You don't go right. I'm gonna try and make you know whatever. There's ten people. There's a, there's a hundred people. Whatever, five hundred people. You're not gonna go. I'm gonna make every single person laugh like that. You're just gonna go. I'm gonna go out there. We'll have a right laugh. Mm. Every, not everyone's gonna like you, but it doesn't matter as long as as long as you do your best. And then and, and you have fun. Yeah, exactly. If you're having, they're gonna love it. They're, they're gonna have fun. Yeah. yeah. So just here's so from all the years that you've been doing comedy, Pat. If if, if we've yeah. got somebody watching this who's who's thinking about taking a step into the world of comedy, what what's yeah. the one bit of advice you'd give to them? I would say, uh, obviously, uh, right. I'd say you've got to have uh, now. It's all about which. Uh, it's it's always been the same for us. I think it's about just being original, finding your voice. It, 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 some people can find their voice within six months. You can see some people they are amazing after like, you know, six months a year, but then other people, it can take them 10, 15 years and then they'll be amazing. Look at Mickey Flanagan. I remember when I started doing comedy, went down to London and he was great. Even then I remember on Bills and you'd see him, he was like the closing act, the big act, but he still wasn't known outside of comedy. He was so good, but he'd been yeah. doing that for like 15, 20 years, whatever at that point. And then mm-hmm. you see him now and people go, yeah, he's so good. But it, to get to that level, he yeah. obviously takes his while to find your voice, and it's writing. Uh, and I think, yeah, just if you want to do it, you're going to do it. You you've got to find what makes you laugh first. Find the funny in it, and then not everyone will agree, but you'll find the people who sort of agree with you. Because with comedy, there's all sorts of styles. You've got people who are quite surreal. You've got people who are quite one-liners. You've got people who are dirty. You've got people who are offensive. You've got people that are family-friendly. So. It, you know, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about trying to pigeonhole yourself. Just, just be funny yeah. and write. Yeah. Then you will naturally find your audience. You'll find you'll find where you belong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Did can you remember the first joke you ever wrote? Can you remember it? Yeah, I wrote. Uh, I remember that first gig that I did was all about. It was a bit of topical stuff, and then not so much about me. And I think that's the best advice I was given because. The best advice I was given was, you know, do more stuff about you. Because I remember doing that first gig and I was talking about, you know, things like uh, what was topical, like Spice Girls. I was talking about um, Jim Boy and Bullseye. You know, I was talking about I was talking about stuff that I that was current, but also that was relevant. And it was all right, but then it was anyone could have joked about, anyone could make an observation about that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I remember, like, there was an experienced comment there and he said to me, he said, look, he said, where are you from? He said, you've got this weird accent, but you, you've you got this weird sort of look and you've got your funny name. Cause, and, and, that, and I remember it when he told it to me, it was almost like he was helping me write when he, it was almost like a setup for a joke. Cause he said, look, your name's Patrick Monaghan. When people introduce you on stage, you, they're expecting like a ginger haired uh, Irish guy. That <laughs> but actually when you come out, it looks like, the pizza delivery guys here, but then you start, I mean, you sound like Anton Deck, you sound like some. Like, <laughs> I remember he was telling me this, this is what people talk more about that. And actually, I thought, yeah, that is actually more interesting. It's funny. And he said, look, this is more interesting if you do that. And I thought, yeah. And then, and I think that's the thing, all of us, every single person has got their own unique life, their own story. And then all you do is everything that we've all, all three of us have done different things today. But yeah, there'll be loads of people. If you talk about what you've done, like Adam's ordered a hot tub, there'll be loads of people that can relate to that. I've never had a hot tub, but I can still laugh at the hot tub. Go, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Banksy, you've been out, you're getting ready for, you're learning Greek. You might think, we haven't learned Greek, but it's quite funny to know, oh God, yeah, you, you've got to try and draw pictures and symbols and everyone can relate to what you do. And I think that's the beauty of comedy. I think is that once you, you find who you are, you find your voice, 
then I think other people will find that and go, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, that's funny. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what comedy, that's why, you know, people, even though there was a bit of a stigma about it where people went, oh, comedy, it's all about relatable, it's too relatable, it's all this. And I think that's a load of rubbish. You know, people would slag off people like McIntyre, they'd slag off people like Peter Kay. But actually, it's probably jealousy, but also people like McIntyre and Peter Kay were, are so or were so good is because they make it look effortless. You know, they make it look yeah, so yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the key to comedy is don't, you know, you've got to make it look easy so the audience can enjoy yeah. it. Well, they, they don't want to, they haven't come to a lecture or they've not come, you know, they don't want to come and do a quiz. They just want to have a drink and have a laugh. And I think that's, that's the secret I think, to doing yeah. best or to enjoying it. Yeah. So, like, when you when you were first starting out, then, because, like I said, obviously, you sort of helped me out quite a lot in my early days of stand up. As did a as did a number of other comedians. Who was that one comedian that you sort of thought, right, this is really cool. This guy's helping me out. If I've got any material that I need to run past him, he'll he'll give me a ha a hand with it. Did you have any like any help like that when you first started? Or out? her, Nick, or her. We're in twenty twenty. Or here. her. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. God, you sexist bastard. <laughs> I, don't, you know, it's funny. I think I think um, yeah I think with, with us because I think when you do open mics it's it was quite nice there was a lot of camaraderie a lot of like new comedy everyone we were all in the same boat and there was a lot of that back then where you know we would all just stick together because you'd all be turned up to do the same open mic gigs it the same seven or eight of us at the time and it was quite nice it was like a little workshop so you'd always come up and because you're all doing like the same you do. You had your five, seven minutes, your ten minute art. You all do the same, so everyone sort of knew each other's act. <coughs> you see it all the time. So you sort of held yeah, each other. Yeah. It was quite organic. That's the way that it would would learn like that. But I think in terms of um, in terms of actually writing or in terms of you know finding the best jokes, I think you can't really because I've seen people in the past do it and people still do it where they go listen this will be good if you try doing this joke or doing this and I think it's great like that but I don't think it will work for you because if it hasn't come from you then the audience is going to be able to tell that when, you, when you're when saying it it's just because mm -hmm. then you're going to be it's like why we don't do pub jokes because any, you know someone try, just try to retell a pub joke it's like oh here we go there's the setup ding ding yeah. ding here yeah, Bang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one try, you know so it's and I think that's where I think you can get uh, encouragement of it and say, oh, that's a great routine. Oh my God, that's really good. Did that really do it? And then that's good. But I think a lot of that, uh, especially when I was starting out, I think a lot of it was, you know, you just do your, not really homework, but you do stuff like, I remember watching like Dave Allen and people like that. And you just think, if you watch somebody who's really good at it, you can learn. And it's so true. If you watch, same as footballers or any sport or any art, poetry, music. If you watch someone who's really good at it for one hour, you'd learn more than that than you would mm -hmm. from watching 10 hours of anything or chatting to people 10 hours about it, mm -hmm. 10,000 hours yeah. about it. I remember watching people like Dave Allen. You just watch an hour and I think, Jesus, you know, how does he do it? It's just effortless. And then you learn the bench after a while. You think, because he's, it's the same as Billy Conley, just because they're not trying to be anywhere else. They're just, he, he's, he's found his voice, he's found his style. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool. For us, yeah. yeah. yeah but it is, it's time, right? it just, it takes, that's the thing with comedy, I think, even though it's an old cliche people say about it, comedy's all about timing, but it's not really about timing on stage, it's about timing in your life, it's about, you've got to have life experiences. Mm. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That's one thing I'm running into at the moment, and, yeah. um, so I've been, I've just done a lot of comedy sketches for Channel 4 and they were like fresh, young, uh, new, new talent, fresh, young people. Um, yeah. And I was getting sort of not pushed in certain directions, but like they were insistent on having young, young, young people, but with no life experience. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, but some of the funniest people I know, they're my age, they're older than me. Um, yeah. And it's, it, it was... I'm not saying I didn't find some brilliant people because I absolutely did, and I've done some brilliant sketches with some funny, funny people. Yeah, but there's so, sometimes there's a bit of a um, a focus on what's young and what's hip and what's trendy, yeah. you know. And it's yeah. like yeah. the experience comes through. 
you know, yeah. from people like yourself, so, you know, who, who've been there and done that. And if you don't have yep. the life experience, how can you expect to be able to, like, sort of pass anything yeah. on, even you make can't. it funny? Yeah, well, you can't fake that. That's the thing mm. with experience. You, there's no way. And if you do, you can see it a mile off. That's the thing. And I, I think it's funny because as a, I remember as a, when I started out in my twenties doing comedy, it was great fun. Mm-hmm. But when I look back on it, it's cringeworthy. Cause I think, oh my god, I was, you know, I was saying that like if I was watching it now, yeah. as someone with my boy is watching it, I'd just be like, you know, I'd be cringing for them, going, oh god, I hope they're gonna be all right. And and I think that's the problem is that you've got to, um, you as as an audience, even for us, look when if I'm watching someone you can see it straight away when they come on stage you can see the confidence the way they hold it they might not necessarily have the funniest jokes but if you put someone on you know in their 20s someone great who's got like a five minute amazing set but then you put someone like Johnny Vegas or uh, Billy Conley Mm -hmm. you know uh, Robin Williams put them on after they've not got the funniest jokes but they've got amazing presence because they've got yeah. years and years of experience and that will come across much funnier yeah in that, yeah. Is that and i think that's the i think that's the thing with comedy it's probably like songwriting or whatever you know with anything or, or acting filming whatever yeah look at actors the way they just get better when you watch it mm-hmm. where it's just yeah, yeah. yeah just what is it they say to, to be to become good at anything it takes about ten thousand hours yeah, 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 that 10,000 hour run. So that's, yeah, and that's, and it's not a fluke. I mean, if you look at everyone, all the best athletes, best musicians, performers, whatever, yeah, they'll have all, you know, been going for years and years. I must be an expert at taking a shit. Yeah. I've been on that toilet a lot in my life. I must be the only thing I'm an expert at. We're all Ex- competing. Expert poor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, there's rumblings about Eddie Murphy uh, possibly doing a comeback. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either this year or next year. What do what like? What do you think about that? Like, well, I'm looking forward to what he's got to say. Actually, to be honest, I, like he's not done anything for so long. It's going to be interesting to get his take on on the world now. Yeah, because well, do you, well, we've probably all seen. It. Do you remember when he did Raw and Delirious? I mean, yeah, they were yeah. amazing. I mean, they were masterclasses in yeah. stand up. And, yeah. and but that is that is sort of unusual against the grain because I mean when you saw him on stage, you, they, they, it hasn't dated that much. It's still quite good. But mm. the thing is, he comes across as if he's like a fifty-year-old man on stage, but actually he's probably he's probably only like nineteen or twenty. Or 20 yeah, he was in his early twenties. Yeah. yeah, and he's the exception to that. There's not many people that could get away with that. Oh, absolutely. There's definitely exceptions where where like like just natural like unbelievable talent is there in every industry you know there's just outliers who yeah, yeah. and he well, was definitely one of those yeah but i think it will be difficult for him to come back because i think because he's i mean he's like a billionaire actor whereas mm. and we were talking about what's relate with comedy it is about you've still got to connect with an audience yeah. and people i mean they'll love him the, the, the hardest thing for him is going to be making the audience calm down as soon as he comes on stage they're going to yeah, yeah. Laugh within the first two minutes i mean it's it'll be it'll make it too hard for him where the expectation it'll be so high and the thing is they'll be laughing at him just go, whoa yeah look at that mike hey what's happening whoa, whoa. and he'll just he can just do that for two minutes and they'll be howling mm. but then after about 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes for him, then you know it's going to be it has to be the material it has to be the real stuff that comes through and i don't i think he'll, if he's going to do a comeback I mean, he would probably have to do hundreds of, of little secret gigs just to sort of... Well, um, the, there's that whole um, comedians in cars getting coffee. There's him in yeah. Seinfeld, and they're talking about his comeback. And Jerry Seinfeld says, well, if you need somewhere to do all your practice gigs, you can do them at my comedy club. Ah. What? <laughs> wow, that's great, isn't it? So, yeah, well, that, that's what he needs to do. He, he, I mean, he'd be great at it, but he just... You need to get back in and doing them little gigs. I mean, God, that would be amazing for the audience. Because I, I never, re- I never realised that Seinfeld and Eddie Murphy started at exactly the same time at exactly mm-hmm. the same comedy club. Yeah. Bloody hell! I didn't know that at yeah. all. Yeah, 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 yeah. They started out at the same place amazing. and everything. Yeah. Wow. Bloody uh, hell! 
Yeah, they talk yeah. about it on this Comedians Getting Coffee. It's uh, If you've not seen it, Pat, you should definitely see it. It's, there's some real good, real good on, guests. Is it on Netflix or something? Uh, it's on... I don't know if it's on Netflix or YouTube. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it started off as a YouTube series and then went on to Netflix. Mm. And what happens? So Jerry Seinfeld just drives Eddie Murphy around. So just Seinfeld didn't... turns up in one of his fucking... One of his priceless cars that he's got, like a <laughs> 1960s Ferrari or something. And he yeah. uh, he picks he picks up a comedian. They go and have coffee, talk about their careers, and then he drops them off. He's had um, Kevin Hart's been on it. He's had Ricky Gervais on it. Um, yeah, there's so there's about four yeah. seasons of it. So, but I'll yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. All have right. you not even heard of it, neither? No, Adam. No. I've heard of it, but I've just never never seen it. I've never seen it, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's really good. It's really good. They break down, like, how they got into comedy and, like, their processes of writing and all that sort of stuff. Like, it's an interesting watch. So, yeah, I'd defo defo recommend that. Cool. I'll watch that. I'll Google that. Comedians in cars, but, yeah. Yeah, 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 comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah, I think... (laughs) Comedians in cars, there you go, getting coffee. Look at this. Yeah. Like, oh, look, right at the top. Comedians in cars getting coffee. Best of season 11. Season 11. Season 11. All right, Jeez. then, Jesus. <laughs> oh my Seinfeld God. likes coffee. He has an addiction. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and every, every car that he drives in it, it's a different car. And they're all his. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they're all in. Well, have you seen Jay Leno's collection of cars? No. What's he got? Mate, like? he's, got like a, he's got like a fucking great big aircraft hangar that he just mm. smashes all his cars. That he's got do you know what? I would do that. Cars. I would do that, and I would have souped up 80s and early 90s hatchbacks. Really? Renault 5 a... GT. Yeah, but what would you do with all the cars? I just not interested in them. I mean, what would you... I, just, would I, you I, would, I would just have like... A straight road where I just burn down them and then burn back and then I get in another one and then I burn down it and burn yeah. back. See, probably Pat, until I kill Adam's myself. All about, <laughs> Pat Adam's all about the dick swinging. That's what it is. Yeah. What in a Fiesta <laughs> in an XR2 Fiesta? I don't think so. Yeah, Ned. mate. If, I if, just you, like... if you took one of them, yeah. if you took one of them down Oxford Road, all the fucking pulley lasses up. Oh, look at him in his XR2. Oh. If I went down on a BMX, the pulley lasses would be like, oh. Yeah, fair word. But no, fair word. no. Seriously, man. Like, I, I have no desire to buy supercars and things like that. What I want is the things that I couldn't drive when I was a kid. Like my brother, he had cool cars, like a Nova. Oh, yeah, a Nova SR. Yeah, or an XR2 or a Golf Mark One GTI. Yeah, I'll just have a, all of them, please. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, <laughs> to be fair. What is it? Oh. They're really expensive these days, though. <laughs> yeah. So I need to earn a lot oh, of money. Oh, yeah, the 20, 30 grand, them, for Mark 1s. Yeah. yeah. Now, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark 1, what? So it's like a, is it like a Golf? Is yeah, the Golf Mark. Yeah, it's the first get, Golf. If you get a Golf Mark 1 GT, they're prob- wow. GDI, they're probably about 15 grand if you want a good quality one. From what year was that? That was like 1985 to 89, I think, that one. And did it look cool, though? Yeah. Really cool? Well, it just looks, you just look like a boy racer. <laughs> yeah. what, are you, what are you driving these days, Pat? i got like a Nissan Duke. So just oh, like, okay. it's, it's good, so it's reliable. It's like... So you've got, so you got a soccer mum's car. <laughs> is that what they call it? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> like a soccer mum car, isn't it? It's like the, the, the middle-class women drive off to watch their kids play football. Yeah, Come on, everybody uh, in the boot. Take your boots off before you get in, though. <laughs> no, oh my goodness! No, see, I'm not a petrol head at all. I wouldn't even know what to. When we went to have a look, we'd never had a car. So I was just like, whatever. And then we were just looking for something that was reliable, like the cash car was good, like a Nissan. Mm. Have you seen them? But they're mm-hmm. too big. It's like, and then um, yeah, but I don't know. I think now I'd probably research a bit more. But it's been really good. Touchwood. It's been like. I suppose. Nice... I suppose in London you don't really massively need a car. Yeah, not in London. It's, oh God, I'd be on the tube. I'd walk. Yeah. You know, never, never drive. Mm. But then, if I'm when I'm on tour, yeah. so I've been on the tour and stuff. I have to I have to drive because I can just drive to places now and just drive straight home. Yeah. It's quite nice. I think, like 
even up to Manchester, I was driving, I was up to Bakewell and, you know, place like that, Derby, whatever, you know, you're going on tour and then, whereas in the old days, you'd get a train up there and the last train was like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, so you'd have to stay over, get a hotel, mm -hmm. and then come back the next day, so you'd lose about a day and a half. Whereas now, drive up, get up, do the show at 7.30, Get off stage at half nine, ten in the car, ten past ten, bosh, straight back, and you're back in London within two, three hours. Yeah. So back then, back in your own bed, nice. one o'clock, it's brilliant. Mm. It's, so, then, um, what what's the name of this tour you, you're doing at the minute, Pat? Or not so doing? Tour, well, or yeah, not exactly. doing at the moment? <laughs> so when he, when he started, luckily I'd started it in uh feb end of jan february did the leicester comedy festival started and i was touring all around the uk all of february and march and it was meant to be going all the way through to june and it's called started at the bottom but now i'm here and that now has obviously been delayed the last show i did was i think march the 14th or 12th whatever so now um all the theater dates literally uh Pulled, postponed it all until now. They've all been moved to September, October, November now. And then um, hopefully touch wood, if it all gets sorted by June, July, August. Even the, But Edinburgh's off, because I was going to go and do my new show in Edinburgh. <laughs> so um, so hopefully touch wood, it should be back on this new tour, should start in September. But obviously, I reckon there will be still some bits and pieces happening in yeah. July and August, some warm yeah. And if and if people are wanting information and stuff like that, where can they go to find that out? What's your uh... on my website is uh, patrickmonahan.co.uk, or you can go on my social media, which is Patrick J Monahan, and that's for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and what and all of that. Yeah, I've got, I'm, then... I'm on your Facebook page here. It's Patrick Monahan comedian Facebook page. I was just looking at all the videos. There's a lot of videos that have the thumbnail of your no looking up your nose. <laughs> yeah, what are you meant to do? You meant to see you're good with this. What are you meant to do? Put like a proper um, a picture or something. Am I yeah, meant to like we'll, we'll sort that out, Pat? Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I know quite, that it's quite amused. It's just like every single every single thumbnail is just this image here. <laughs> <laughs> It's just random videos of me. It's because it's me like talking about what's been happening, and yeah. every day I'm trying to do like a little, little video mm. stuff. Yeah, you have to teach me what to do there. Cause I'm gonna... So you, so today or yesterday was it? You, you found some dodgy bloke trying to sell self testing kits. Yeah, that's it. He's trying to sell <laughs> self testing kit. Three hundred and seventy five quid. He said, you can test this, and if you if you're positive, I said, oh brilliant. So if you're positive, you. Go in self isolation for two or three weeks, but if you test negative, you have to go in self isolation for two or three weeks anyway and lock in. <laughs> why are people buy? Why are we buying a self testing kit? You're mad. Why yeah. don't you just go, just go stay in self isolation, self -isolation for two yeah. or three weeks and save three hundred and seventy five quid? You, just you could have bought a hot tub. Yeah, exactly. Get a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like uh, Kalito's way or Scarface, you start throwing cash in a hot. Yeah, so it's it's quite good fun though. I love it. I've been every day doing like a little video and just going out and then what's been happening because it, I suppose like in, it, it as a stand up, it's your way of you know getting out, venting what's happening, talking mm -hmm. about stuff, you know, keeping it. Cool. Uh, have, uh, have you done any of the online gigs yet, or are you doing any? Uh, I did a couple bits and pieces. There's um, a lovely lad, like, Crispin, who does like these stand up for labour gigs, and he's really good. And he does a few where, like, we did, I, in fact, I did one tonight earlier on where, um, and he had Jeremy Corbyn was on. You know, Jeremy Corbyn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he's stepping down on Saturday. So he was on doing a chat. And then so there's like all these people all over the UK. It's brilliant. It's so surreal. So, like, Crispin will host it. Well, it's Zoom, like what we do now. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. yeah. He'll compare it and chat to people. All right, we've got we've got Denise and Dave down in Brighton. Okay, we've got we've got you know Gary and uh, and Sarah up in Glasgow. How are you doing? And he'll chat to certain people. You'll see everyone like this, and he'll go around, and then he can't chat to everyone. He just chat to a few people, and then he go right. Um, we've got Patrick here, whatever, and and then I'll just come on and chat. Go, all right, everyone, how's it going? And then I'll do a few bits and pieces. Yeah. So yeah, it's fun. But but the thing is, it is quite lazy because I'm still sat here. I'm like chat with you guys it's quite good fun it's fun for me but you just sat at home really there's no traveling you sat in your armchair so i do miss the 
getting out and yeah, you know, perhaps people. naked from the t-shirt down. Just so everybody, he's <laughs> just sat in his kitchen, who's balls man. resting on the plastic chair. Last week I did, I, I wore my dressing gown for work way too much last week. <laughs> I was sat here all day in a dressing gown just editing yeah. video content and I said there's going to there's gonna have to be some kind of like transition period for when people go back to the oh. office where oh. you're actually allowed to wear your dressing gown for part of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, you know I reckon that you're right because loads of people, will, and also loads of people are just like, do you know what, I'm not coming to the office, I'll just work from home. I can't imagine, nobody's going to want to travel anymore. I think there's going to be a massive now, shift. This- yeah, yeah. This, this, this is mm-hmm. this is proven that a load of stuff that they said, oh, you can't do that, you can't do it. Yes, you can. We're we're, yeah. we're doing it right now. There's plenty yeah. of people yeah. working from home. You can't there tell is. people that they can't work from home, and they and they actually can. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, What's when I when I got the, the editing office? job first, the first uh, month I worked in their office. This was like back in 2016 or 15, in fact. Um, and I worked in their office for the first month, and then I said to them, look, I can do this from home. I don't need to come and sit in your office. I don't need to yeah. spend an hour on the A19 every morning and then an hour on the A19 on the way home. I don't need to um, bring a yeah. lunch in or go to get some KFC or whatever. I can literally do all this from home. And I found myself yeah. being much more productive being yeah. at home. Mm. Yeah, because you can get into it instead of wasting your time yeah. traveling and you're knackered. You have to get a cup of tea when you get there. Whereas from home band straight in Boston. exactly so I think it's going to be a major thing for people obviously not for people like yourself like for comedians um, who you, you're gigging constantly and you're doing tours so that's obviously not going to change but for people who work office jobs there's definitely going to be a huge mm-hmm. shift and and I think it's going to be for the better I really do yeah. I, I, yeah. I think there'll be a lot of improvements for the better once we come out the end of this Yeah, like, and yeah. it's just everybody's eyes are now opened up to like what, what, like what the fuck's going on? You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting. It'll be Definitely. interesting when we're all said and done. So Definitely. well, we've been we've been going here about an hour and twenty minutes, Pat. We don't want to take up any more of your time, mate. Yeah, no, um, it's been an absolute so, pleasure seeing your face. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you've cheered us both up, mate. You know what I mean? It's, it's just looking at your smiley head. Now, where is it though? Because I remember it's so funny because it feels like it was only last week when we were all in Hartlepool. Do you remember at the flicks? And then now yeah. look at us. I know. Three different parts of the country. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we can it's still talk, which is amazing. I know. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> it really is. You know what? In a couple of years' time, the next virus that hits, we're all going to be holograms. <laughs> Just the three of us will be like broadcast. <laughs> That'll be the next thing, won't it? So yeah. there'll be some, there'll be some kid out there who's yeah, perfecting it so that the yeah. next time this hits, he'll sell a projector, what'll project an audience into a room and you're projected oh onto the... Yeah. yeah. Like Vir- well, it'll all be virtual, actually. You'll probably be in a virtual pub. And then you that's put your it. PS4, PS4 headset on and away yeah. you go. Oh, we've yeah. got an audience. And, you can, and you, can, you can be your own avatar. You can be whatever you want. So you can like, be a dragon on stage <laughs> or... <laughs> you could, it'd be cool. It's about looking like a dragon, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking, man. Honestly, right, brilliant well, to talk to you, Pat. Cheers, guys. It was good Thank to talk you. to you, Pat. Chat, cheers. And Thank we you. shall, uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you soon, mate. Yeah, catch definitely. I'll be in touch about your Facebook page. Yes, please. Cool. Let Speak to you up. tomorrow. Chat to me tomorrow. We'll, yeah. yeah, to stop that and it's tidy up. Thank you. No worries. All right, See you later, See you later, mate. Bye bye bye. Well, that was a nice chat with Patrick yeah. Patrick Monaghan. Yeah, it certainly was. It was so good to speak to him, man. It's been a long time, like you said, five yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been a few years. Yeah. yeah, it was good to good to catch up, man. He's a funny. So, guy. um, yeah, 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 he is. And hopefully, if there's any younger comics out there, he's give you a couple of good tips mm-hmm. on stuff to do and things like that. Um, yeah, man. Now. Onto the onto that's podcast number four in the bag, mate. That's four. It is. It done. is. Wow, four. That's four. Never thought we'd get there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Just so, I, we've been talking about doing this for so long. Um, yeah. Just never felt like we'd actually get there, but no, it's been good. Yeah, so, yeah. have we got and anybody we'll, else planned for the next one? Uh, I have not planned anybody right. so far. I don't know so if I've you got, wanted to maybe <clears> get like a somebody film me on. Well. 
Um, so potentially somebody film me, but um, uh, Lucia Ravardi Tomlinson is Tiana Lee, um, and she's a very funny lady, and I think it'd be a good she'd be good to get on. Um, okay. So I've done a couple of comedy sketches with her. She's um, <laughs> she's a musician. She's a singer. Um, she okay. does comedy songs. She's done a bit of comedy stand up as well. Um, but okay. it's it's mainly our music that she does, and um, I'll slot one of the songs in in here so that people can see a bit of it. Here's to all the mums and dads on school and the kids, whatever the hell that means. So while I've been getting more older, and now for the last two weeks, I've sort of reworded one of my songs to reflect the life we're all living. Well, me in particular. Enjoy. I live in isolation. They call me Tiana Lee, and I'm well miffed up. Some twat at that now I'm stuck inside. Kids full time, nowhere to hide. Um, but we did two Channel 4 things with that, and I'm potentially going to do some more Channel 4 stuff with her as well. So. I think we should nice. uh, speak. I'll speak to see when she's available and uh, yep. see what we can do. Yeah, 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 definitely. Cool. So, right. what are your well, plans for the it. rest of the week, Nick? Cowboying, isn't it? Cowboying, <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> we'll enjoy ma'am. it. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll probably, like, I've just got the new FIFA as well, so I'll probably smash a bit of FIFA as well. I'll be perfect. Oh, you sat bastard. Yeah. I do like a bit of FIFA. I played FIFA. Like, I've been playing FIFA since it, like, it come out, mate. You know what I mean? It's one of those games that you sort of grow up with, so you just yeah. play all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. Well, that is it. That's another episode in the bag. Thanks very much to everybody for tuning in. If you've yep. tuned in, if you haven't. Hope you enjoyed it. Fucking you. If you haven't you don't know what you're missing anyway but if you have liked it give us a share uh give give adam's youtube page a bit of a like subscribe yeah share that out and uh yeah thank you very much until cool. the next one see you Good later evening.